One of the big challenges that we always had was trying to capture the beauty um, of country and the people. Um, you know, the easy approach would be just to go in, start firing the camera away at, um, you know, some of the, the poverty side of, um, of the communities and towns and everything. But so a challenge was um, making sure that we steered clear of that. You know, Alec always wanted to make sure that we um, captured the film in a, in a beautiful way to show the beauty of the people in the communities because it exists. Uh, and a lot of outsiders just come in and shoot the easy stuff. Um, so when you, you know, when you see the film, you'll see that it's just, you know, from go to woe of, of just capturing these amazing moments and these amazing people behind um, each town and community and, and the families and everything. I don't think there was anything that was easy in, throughout the whole process, but I'm just trying to think whether, it felt like everything was an uphill battle, like from the, from the get-go, dealing with, um, dealing with uh, you know, what Zach was going through, dealing with what Alec was going through as well. He was going through a lot of his own issues. And then even getting up on country, you know, um, Alec you know, was responsible for us. He introduced five white people into these communities. Um, and he basically said, these guys are gonna capture your story. So we had you know, our own challenge of trying to introduce ourselves to the, um, to the local communities and people. And, you know, whenever, when we first got there, we spent quite a bit of time out on country or, or walking around town, just sort of saying hello with Alec and, and the local elders, just so they became familiar with who we were. Um, I guess once all that was in place, it became a little bit easy to capture the beauty because everyone was relaxed and it was just sitting in front of us and we could just sit back and, and pick it off with a, long, with a long lens, a lot of it. We did shoot pretty much everything with long lens, didn't we? Well, I, I think you, you, you nailed it there. It, it's, um, I think access was, was huge. Like we got to see uh, so many things that I think most film crews wouldn't be allowed to see. Mm. And I think it was uh, you know, because of you know, yourself and Alex and, and, and Zach and the wonderful story that you guys were trying to tell and everyone being so supportive of that and, and wanting to you know, contribute you know, their part of you know, telling that story, whether it was, um, you know, build, building a humpy or uh, carving a boomerang or, um, you know, the Darus going down to the river just to have a moment of levity amongst this very kind of intense moment in their life. And, and everyone just, you know, they, they kind of took us in like family and just, you know, just wanted to have that, those moments captured and would just pull us in, go, hey, maybe, maybe have a look at this or go over there and do this. Right. And yeah, contributing. Yeah, <laughs> contributing all the way. It was, and it was wonderful. And, and you know, to, to, to film documentary in that nature and not having that pressure uh, of, of uh, knowing what you can, can't shoot and, and just having that open access, I think that was a wonderful thing. That's a good point. Mm. I think they made it easy for us, you know, allowing us to be accepted into the community and the family and even go through what they go through every single day mm. to be able to um, experience that. Um, it changed me mm. to no end, like it completely changed my perspective on life and, and my opinion and, uh, and education um, yeah. behind Indigenous Australians and I'm pretty sure most of the team, you know, reflected the same, same result. So. Absolutely, I, I, I learnt more on this one film than I've learnt my entire life <laughs> yeah. about you know, the Aboriginal and community. And that's, that's yeah. what's great, you know, people that go and see the film, they say exactly the same thing, like if I'm at the Q&A, that's, that's the feedback that I always get, that yeah. they didn't know most of these things uh, existed um, in their own backyard, basically. And it's something that Australia needs to embrace and, and, and talk more and, and definitely educate themselves. They need to take something away from this film in a big way. You know, like I said earlier, everything was at the discretion of the elders and, and we knew that um, there were components to ceremony that we couldn't film. We could never step, overstep the mark and we had to always show up, no, utmost respect for the country and the, and the, um, and the event that we were, we were witnessing. So um, there were times that the camera had to shut off and, and one of those memorable moments was when the camera was off. And, uh, you know, we had the, the, um, the, the uh, amazing um, option to be able to go and watch this and at midnight and see how it all played out. That, that still sits with me. I loved it, but yeah. Uh, yeah, something incredibly special, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's uh, the, the, whole, uh, the whole process to ceremony. It's uh, Alec, uh, you, know, men, you know, talks about it so aptly in the film. He talks about it being like chess. Yeah. And getting all the cheap, uh, you know, different pieces in place until yeah. it's checkmate, and uh, you know, and it happens. And uh, for for us, it was about uh, you know allowing you know because you, you know as a film crew we can't rush anything or you know make ha anything happen to our own schedule. It's about just being there and 
letting it unfold before our eyes and um, and it was fascinating to just see that process and uh, you know, seeing all the different steps stages along the way in order to make uh, make this happen mm -hmm. and uh, so that was and, your favorite part was it <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part I the execution the execution <laughs> yeah the, the the process was my favorite part absolutely yeah. because um, it's it's one of those things that you you know you, you hear about in a very simplistic terms about what happens, but to see what actually goes on is something you know, completely different. Yeah, as a filmmaker, and, you were kind of in, excited about everything as it was playing absolutely. out. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I, th I think uh, you know everyone's excited along the way. It's it's everyone knows that it's it's like this this big thing which is coming up, like this mm. big party, and and you know it's about getting people ready. It's about getting prepared and organised, and you know and, and and there's always this sense of excitement. And there's the, this moment that happens uh, pre ceremony where. The, the, the men and the women are split and the, the, right. the Darus have their moment and, and all the mothers and the sisters have their moment as well. Party. And it's, it's kind of that pre-party oh before. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's that, uh, you know, getting everyone together and, you know, in, enjoying those, those final moments before their, their sons and grandsons and brothers go through ceremony yeah. and they become a new man. And their, and their relationship changes, changes. Um, uh, after ceremony as well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were really fortunate enough to have, uh, we had our um, unofficial world premiere back up on country uh, just, just gone a year ago, so that was um, early April last year into 2016. Uh, and we took it to each of the different um, regions in which we shot. We took it to um, Doomagee, we took it to Robinson River, and we took it to Borrowoola. And, um, you know, the community turned out in, in droves. Like, you know, the Doomagee premiere had nearly a thousand people at it. Uh, and Robinson River and Boralula had the whole community there to watch it. And we had um, Black Screen, which was a, an initiative at the time um, supported by um, National Film and Sound Archive out of Canberra. And they were basically a travelling um, tour where they had a big screen, they had everything on site, and we were able to bring that cinematic experience to the communities. And so, we um, set up in the football field under the light, uh, or under the stars, sorry. Um, we had this massive screen and, you know, a thousand people sitting there. It was an incredible moment. Uh, and then coming back, you know, we had our world premiere at Hot Docs um, pretty much today, a year ago, uh, which was, which was a, a big experience as a first time director to be able to be at um, the world's most renowned documentary film festival. Uh, and then from there, I thought we did, I think, 12 more festivals after that. And, came back to Sydney and won the Audience Award at Sydney and then went to Melbourne and won the Audience Award at Melbourne. So, yeah, we've been pretty, pretty fortunate in, in, in the festivals, yeah. yeah. And, and that shows a lot because it, it means it's, it's connecting with people. Yeah. And, you know, a large, you know, a large part of, um, you know, Aaron's plan later down the track is that, you know, the, to, to help the, the schooling system kind of bridge that cultural divide and kind of, you know, understand things which have never really been taught in schools before yeah. and this this is such an important resource as far as uh, you know educating young the children. next generation the next generation yeah, the yeah. ones that have got to make the change so yeah. so outreach which is the the next stage which is going to be with cinema on demand and, and how we get to the get the film um, beyond the screen the big screen uh, it is going to be um, formed around an education kit and so the education kit is basically a toolkit that allows teachers and, and students uh, in the classroom be able to watch the film and break it down and talk about certain components to it and, and talk about um, how Zach felt and the experience and, uh, and what he went through and, and it just allows them to get a little bit more involved in, in something that they're all learning about for the first time. So it's a really important piece of, um, piece of uh, information that we're hoping to get into the majority of schools around Australia. It's about um, just righting the wrongs and you know a lot of uh, the generations over the past in Australia have had a, uh, as Alex says, an ingrained uh, opinion on um, Aboriginal people in this country, and you know it's 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 just wrong. Like we're all we're all people, and we, we need to treat each other equally and, and fairly. And I think this this generation coming through, they're going through a, a transformation right now. You know, Australia is changing right now, and you know we've over the course of making this film, we've seen that um, that change taking place, which is fantastic. And we, you know, we're just so fortunate that um, our film's now ready at this at this critical time where it can enter schools and change the minds of, of the, the generation coming through. 
you know, I've seen the change in my two boys alone. They're now eight and ten years old, so they've basically grown up with this film. And their perspective on um, Aboriginal people and, and the Indigenous culture here in Australia, um, it's, it's fresh and it's, it's, it's welcoming. And I just love the way that they see things and, and, you know, correct other people that get it wrong or talk about it or adapt it as well. You know, I've seen my, my oldest son um, adapt the culture into his life and, and speak about it as though he's Aboriginal himself, which is a great celebration. Um, you know, that we've seen take place in other countries around the world like um, New Zealand and, and Canada and it's good to be able to see that transformation finally taking place here in Australia. Actually, with, with that, I was, just, uh, I was just up in Byron Bay last week and one thing which they're doing there is um, uh, sort of building this community whereby uh, it's not about 16 year, or a whole bunch of 16 year olds going out and getting drunk together. They're, they're within a circle uh, with people of all ages and who have been through all you know through all things in life and and sitting around this circle and sharing stories and I think that and they've actually taken this approach from the Aboriginal culture that right. it's something where it is about family and community and it's about sharing stories it's about um, uh, you know everyone knowing that they're not alone and they're not going through this situation by themselves and someone else you know, has, has gone through it um, and different time in a different way but they've gone through it before it's support network. and I think you know uh, yeah exactly it's a support yeah. network and I, it's it was it was refreshing to see that because uh, you know so many youth kind of just go off on their own trot and uh, you know having having that support network there I think is is great for actually evolving our, our culture and our community mm. as Alec always says you've got Try to assimilating um, Aboriginals to to um, Western Western society for a long time. How about you try doing it the other way now? <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot to learn. I can only base it on you know something that I went through, and that is just know know your subject, know who you um, know the theme, and know who you're making a documentary about. Um, you know the the important thing is that you're not just capturing something for the sake of capturing it. You've got to learn something yourself, and if you're not learning it, then you're not passing on that knowledge. So. It's, you know, I had to, um, you know, change my way of life a lot in order to accommodate this documentary and, you know, I'm forever great, grateful for it and, yeah, I don't think I would have changed anything. Across all uh, different platforms, I think the tools and knowledge are now out there and available. You can YouTube anything and learn how to shoot something or light something. Um, but once again, it goes back to what Aaron's saying, that it's, it's about understanding what, what you're doing. Um, and if you understand what you're doing as far as the story you're trying to capture, then a lot of those things, uh, you know, just automatically fall into place and you just know how to go about it. But um, I, th I think also, uh, you know, from the production crew side of things, uh, we had, you know, a couple of wonderful sound recorders, Gordy and Jack, along the way, uh, who just did a remarkable job just capturing the, the sound and the ambience of, of this environment. Pictures, you know, the, uh, only 50% of a film. And, uh, you know, part of it was capturing the, the, the sounds of the outback and, and, and making sure that, you know, these little moments that happened were just absolutely clear and wonderful. And, you know, they, they were always, you know, wandering off, on wandering the road, off to, to try and get something <laughs> special and, and, and just... Uh, they hated the red engines, that's what they hated. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also to uh, you know Bastian who came along and you know had so much data that he needed to uh, transfer uh, every day and just was such a wonderful support network there to just make things flow and he did, he uh, Bastian did a couple of beautiful time lapses I think mm. the one which uh, which is used uh, in in the animation mm. introduction was all done by Bastian where the, the camera moves up into the sky from mm. the water is just absolutely stunning. And, uh, and Chanel, who just was always there to try and help organise and make sure that things were being run and we were in the right place at the right time and yeah. Yeah, making sure that you know, we were keeping our energy up during you know, the, the sort of the tough environments. Um, and of course, you know, Alec, who uh, it's just was amazing at just you know, making sure that we captured the full scope of the story, didn't miss a thing, um, and, and was always there helping prompt new ideas for what, what to do, where to go to, to be able to capture something. Even if it wasn't part of the story, it was more transitional or it was textures or something like that. You know, maybe go down there, you can get a beautiful time lapse or you'll be able to see this incredible landscape. Um, you know, yeah, he really caught, he knew the vision, he knew exactly what needed to be captured, mm. basically. 
But yeah, we were really fortunate to have an amazing team um, to work alongside, you know, Rob and myself and, um, and Sarah and Alec, you know, we'd, it'd be, you know, beyond the production as well, we had David White, um, who won the Oscar for um, Mad Max film, and he, he um, you know, we introduced him to the project, he absolutely loved it and wanted to jump on board, and he did an amazing job saving all the, the uh, my audio mess ups, not Jack and Gordy's, they were amazing. And then uh, we had Jamie um, and Spe uh, Jamie Hedegaard do the colouring and, and Spectrum help out with all the posts. So, and Angela Little did all the composing as well, which, um, you know, I think just the team. It was a small small team, but we all just pulled it together and just made something which, you know, I'm really proud of and I think everybody involved with is proud of as well. So, Another thing a lot of people talk about is the animation mm. and, and how incredible that was. And Brendan how, Cook. Yeah, Brendan Cook and his, you know, just that, 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 those story moments there and just how you were able to present you know, some pretty hardcore information in a way which was accessible and, and, and kept the audience um, uh, engaged. engaged and learning. And, and learning. <laughs> yeah, like it's did, yeah. Did an incredible job, yeah. We've had the theatrical release. Um, we're going into, like I said, the cinema on demand and, and the outreach side of things. So a lot of schools and organisations and companies are now going to be playing it to their employees or students or um, associates. Uh, beyond that, we uh, and a lot of that's happening around NADOC week um, this year, the first week in July. Um, beyond that, SBS uh, airing it, they're broadcasting it, um, I think the second week of NADOC at the moment. So once it's broadcast, uh, we'll then move into the home entertainment space and start to release it on DVD um, and Blu-ray. Uh, and then SBS are also playing it on SBS On Demand for 14 days um, catch up after that. Gotcha. So, um, in terms of Netflix, I think the plan is 2018 at the moment. It's a little way away, um, only because we do have quite an extensive outreach um, strategy in place. So we've just got to make sure that we uh, tick all our boxes there to make sure that it's getting in front of the right people, the right organisations, and the ones that are going to make social change, the ones that are going to listen to the film and apply it to their um, new reconciliation action plans or, or into this education system. Um, to be able to speak about it in a more positive way. And once it's out there and we've, we've, we've ticked all those boxes in our outreach space, then yeah, video on demand, bring it on. That'd be, that'd be fantastic to see it go around the world.